Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Moon Cool Trike electric e bike in a three wheel fashion. Kind of easier, kind of just cruising around or like as a cargo bike, or even for people, maybe older folks don't want to have to deal with balancing and they have trouble doing that. This would be something perfect for like my older mom or something. Doesn't have to really deal with balancing and stuff and just wants to have fun and just ride around town or wherever. We're going to unbox this thing today, set up with you guys and do some riding and see how this thing performs. Let's get started. All right, so let's get into unboxing the big boy, the main meat of the bike. Probably do a lot of speeding up on this part because it can be kind of boring unboxing it, but some of the details will chime in and we'll work through some of the harder parts of the setup. So it looks like these guys actually chose to glue. So they not only staple this box, but they also glued it so it keeps intact during shipping. Wow. So here we go, guys. That's kind of how it goes when you do it by yourself. But we got all this packing material. As you can see, extra fenders. There are the tires and wheels. And check this out, guys. So this is a full-on cage rack system. This is not real wood. This is like a plastic. And of course, whenever you're like cutting stuff on these bikes, you always want to be careful not you're, so you're not cutting any wires. Check that out. That's the seat with a nice padded back. Big old seat on the bottom here. So your butt's going to be nice and comfy. That's the whole back of the bike, basically. Look at this thing. So that's where your two rear wheels are going to go. You're going to have to put the chain on, the sprocket. And um, so hopefully this video kind of helps you to assemble that whole rear part that you normally wouldn't have to on a regular two-wheel bike. And this is one that has a collapsible neck here. See how that works? Just comes up and then we can put our handlebars right in here. Looks like they're gonna be going this way. So we loosen up this clamp, put our handlebars. This is a notched handlebar. So we're gonna clamp that down kind of low for now. Nice, that's in there. And as you can see, it needs a alignment. So this is all loose right here. Looks like this guy is gonna need to go this way and we're gonna need to crank some nuts down. Yeah. So before I, <laughs> I put that up, I wanna crank, there's an Allen uh, bolt right here. I wanna align everything up and I'm gonna crank that up really tight to get it all aligned when we have everything together. But for now, I'm just gonna kinda get everything loosely together. All right guys, so let's get going with the rear end assembly. Uh, I forgot to open up this accessory box and this is probably where we're gonna see all of the chargers, wiring and stuff like that. Maybe a little bit of tools. So I do wanna open this up. So a little baggie of clamps and reflectors and zip ties. Here we we have the rail guide so this is in its own little baggie yeah this is going to be the seat clamp so we're going to put this seat on top of this and put it in here and clamp it when we're ready to do that i want to leave this off so i have access to the rear end so we can put that whole axle on first more reflectors we have a charging brick here you got your brick and then you have your wall plug this can only go one way one side square one side's rounded that's going to plug into your wall and then this is going to plug into your battery to charge it we have two pedals a little mini box here. Let's see what's inside of this front light with a reflector on it. So LED light, that's going to plug in right here into this open orange wire. They're all color coded, so it's pretty simple. We have a couple of axle bolt caps and there's our chain. We're going to be putting that on after we put the rear axle on. Little toolkit. So I'm seeing a Phillips screwdriver. We have Allen S driver here. We have wrenches. Last thing in the box is the manual. Nice color manual right here. It looks like they're going to have really really detailed color display with papers falling out of it. So first thing the instructions show, we have to put on the rear derailers. This little guy is the rear derailer and all we need to do is put it right on here. There we go. See how that's just kind of hanging on there. All right, so now we need the whole rear end axle, rear wheels. We need the axle bolt caps and a big old wrench right here. So it looks like this is kind of important guys. Uh, this is, as you'll notice, is one wheel is gonna be a free wheel with a bearing in it. Then we're gonna have one wheel that has a notch in it that's going to be a drive wheel basically we're just lining up this black notch right here onto the side that kind of has the equivalent notch here the side that's going to freewheel has this spacer so that's how you can kind of tell the difference take off the washer and the nut and we're going to slide on drive wheel right into it till it notches and then just put on our washer first and then our nut second on the other end see that there i'm just going to leave that loose for now let's put on the other side and the direction matters on the tread so as you can see the tread is pointing to my left here we want that to go forward just make the tread go this way and then slide this thing right on there we go we got our spacer on first then we put a washer and our axle nut very simple. See that? <laughs> so 
Cool, huh? Tighten these down as much as we kind of can. There we go. And just to chime in on why they have one wheel freewheeling is because there's no differential in this like a car. When you turn corners, one of the wheels is turning faster so you can turn effortlessly and you have no binding. So this might be a good point to get some assistance if you need another person, if you have another person. We wanna just do this. We're sliding it in here and we're kind of sliding the entire wheel assembly and axle assembly inside of the frame is what we're doing. Another little flaw, I'm only seeing one washer on one side and sliding the bike frame right over the existing bolts that are already on the axle. There we go. And basically just lock this stuff down. I might just leave them a little bit loose in case we need to move stuff around when we're putting on that chain, but it doesn't look like it's gonna move much because everything has square notches in the frame on one side of the bolts. And it looks like the chain is separated and it has the little chain key included as well. A little bit difficult to put on the chain and get this going. You basically want to pass the chain up and over the red sprocket and then come down and around this darker one and then go up and come and just get on to the smallest gear right here. And then you're just kind of coming over through the frame here. So I've got my two little keys here that came with the chain. I'm going to put one in that end and then we're going to pull this chain up and around like so and then put the other end in the opposite side and then just link them both together so you're gonna feel it snap in when you go over and then you just pull there we go so see how that locked in there that ends locked and that sides locked so it's just the opposite on each side lock them in and check it out there is our chain on and freewheeling. Install the fenders on the rear axle. And all that is, guys, is the bolt and nuts are already here, as you can see right here. So all I need to do is loosen these up and put the fenders on. It looks like we want to put the fenders on the inside more near the wheels. See how that is? Basically, we just want to do that on two here and then the two on that side for that fender. Pretty self-explanatory. We're taking our Allen wrench, putting it in the back, and then taking our little wrench here. And we'll take one of these little reflectors here. See how those go in? Basically, it's just a bolt and a little slot notch so it can't go anywhere. Should have put the reflectors on before I put these on because check that out. It's going to be hard to get underneath. Note to sell. Put the other reflector on before I bolt that sucker down. Much easier. See that? <laughs> All right, and that should do it. If I can get this wrench out of here. There we go, bend them a little bit. Slightly centered, both rear fenders on. All right, next up, pedals. There we go. Don't have to go too tight on those because they are going to self-tighten. And left, a little green circle with left on there. I don't see a sticker on there, but we know what we got to do. Eh, not very easy to go to freewheel, but you know. This is a budget. All right, now this is where we're gonna have to hook up all of the brake cables. And also remember the shifter mechanism is gonna need to be attached. Basically through here, and we take our Allen wrench, loosen up the clamp right here. And there's a little groove, I don't know if you can see that, but that's where this wire is gonna go in and then come down through the clamp. Just like that. So a bunch of wire left over, so we're gonna need to snip that off. It looks like they could do a little bit better maybe measuring and planning because this stuff doesn't need to be that long. See how that works? So I'm pulling the right brake here and that's the rear right there. All right guys, next is the shifter cable. So when installing, it should be on the seven speed up there on the handlebars and on the smallest wheel. Remember we mounted this chain on the smallest wheel. So we'll go like this, down and around. And then this is where you, you do want to run this wire right through that little tab, just like that. See that? Okay, I think that's good. All right, cables all installed. And of course they have these little adjusters, right? So if you do end up needing to fine tune it, you can always twist this out on this side or the brake as well. And then also on the front. Okay, now we're ready to assemble the front basket. We'll just get a few threads in there and then put the rest in. See that? You have a little bit of liability leeway there. So you may not want to crank all that down yet until we're done putting on the headlight. I'll just leave it kind of finger tight for now. We're gonna go right in those little loops. Just like that. And then these also go on the loops on the side. So maybe we can just put it together and set it here. 
So we want two straps on the bottom and then it looks like just one to two straps on the side. Definitely want to be careful with your fingers on this stuff. This is like sharp metal guy, so be careful. I really would recommend wearing gloves. I know I'm not, but better if you have a table to do this. So in my eyes, this is a little bit of a con as well. You know, you've got to bend all this sheet metal. It seems to me like maybe just give you really heavy duty zip ties, right? I'd rather do thick plastic zip ties than deal with this sharp metal bending it all myself. One little slip and you will slice the heck out of your finger. See, that's sharp too, that edge right there. So even though that's on as good as it can be, you brush that, you're going to get scraped and cut. Bad idea with these sheet metal strips. Really bad. So see how the basket's going? It's going right there. And I need to use these two guys. Find your own areas to line up. It doesn't really line up perfectly to the screw holes through the basket, but I think that's good enough. All right, so basket's on. Next step is the seat. I don't want to put the headlight on there. I'm gonna have to figure that out myself. So another con, they're missing a page for the headlight in the instruction manual. I'm saying right now, guys, this is the longest it's taken me to put together a e-bike, and it's because it's a three-wheeler. So be ready if you get one of these bad boys. So I'm just gonna spread it just like that. Okay, so you see how this is going? So that's how it is. I got it on there sliding on the rail. I hope other reviewers showed this stuff because if they didn't, you're in for a surprise, guys. All right. Well, I think that's going to do her. Okay. I don't have a torque wrench, but that should be good. There we go, guys. There's our relaxing seat. Hopefully, it's as comfortable as it was hard to put together. So we're just going to open up this clamp and then slide her in. There we go. That does look comfortable though. Whew, almost there guys. We're almost done. I need to get that headlight on. While we're doing that, I need to charge this battery. Plug this in and get that going so we can finish this up and have a fully charged battery by tomorrow because I'm not gonna be able to ride this. It's already getting dark because this is taking so dang long to put together. I plug it into the battery. There we go. We have a red light and let that charge. I'll let you know approximately how long it took to charge from the factory. Okay, so I'm left to my own devices putting on this headlight. At least we know orange goes to orange. Why is it way up there, Moon Cool, when the headlight's way down here? Being careful not to pinch the light wire, putting that bad boy through and and just putting on all the same stuff <sighs> again guys I'm not trying to be hard on these guys I'm just showing it how it is so we're gonna run this up and then just link them up like this see this little orange guy they only can go in one way and it snaps so you push this little silver guy up and then you can unclamp it and then see this little guy in here it's just extremely loose yeah so I'm feeling it start to grab I just want to make sure that I'm centered before I really tighten it down Clamp that back down. Boy, what the heck? Look at this, I have it cranked all the way down and it's just spinning. It's not even turning the wheel. Why they put this collapsible one on, I don't know because you can't collapse the rest of the bike. I think what's happening is I need to tighten these as well. Yep, these are all loose, so something they did not tell you about in the directions, you're just gonna have to figure this out on your own. Clamp that bad boy down. Now we seem tight. Let's see, I'm sitting on it, yeah. Okay, rear brake is definitely gonna be need to be adjusted, I have it fully pressed front brakes great so meant to be a cruiser bike probably gonna have the seat a little bit higher boy I just I wish they would have just used a regular stem not this collapsible one because everything just feels so loose in there and it says right on the rim what the air pressure should be 5 to 30 psi interesting <laughs> Not what I expected, but you know what? I wanna hold my reservation on that. I wanna go and get out. I wanna ride this thing and we'll come back and we'll really do a pros and cons, pick it apart and just kinda let you know exactly how it goes. Okay guys, I think we're ready to ride. Boy, was that a task to put this thing together, but it's all together. Only thing I'm worried about is that headlight underneath the cage because it seems like when the suspension pushes down on the front forks, it smashes the light, turns the light. So probably going to want to remount the light. I think that's what this is for. So anyway, we're all together. Gosh, my goodness, that was a total doozy. We're going to try this thing out. Um, I did just ride down the gravel driveway and back just right here for like 50 feet. And it seems like the shifting is having a problem already. It won't go all the way down to one and two. So I'm going to have to do some adjustments to the derailleur there. But first things I want to do is tell you about the battery and put the battery on before we get on this thing. So the battery did take take only one hour to charge. Again, this is the next day. Um, so it must've been almost fully charged. Put the key in to put this thing on cause it has this little lock pin here. You see that? So lock, unlock. So let's go ahead and unlock it and just slide it right down on here. There we go. 
so it can't go down anymore and then turn the key and then of course you have to turn it on and O is off. So you've got this little power button up here. This is some plastic over the screen so it tells you what to do. Let's just go ahead and hold the power button on. There we go. And then we have light and plus and minus our pedal assist. So I'm going to take this sticker off. There we go. So a nice colored screen there. Before we start riding, let's just go through this menu real quick. So horn. And then we have our power assist. The right button down here is to make it go down to zero. So you don't have to have any power assist. Let's see if the throttle works. So no throttle when there's no power assist. Power assist one, pushing the left hand little button on the bottom, pushing the throttle. There we go. So remember the front tire is what's pulling this bike aside from your pedaling. So power assist three is the maximum. The only other thing is to turn off and on the light, which is holding the up power assist. And I just saw the screen kind of dim and this light icon came on. So that's light on and off. Hold it again, turning the headlight off. And of course we have just our shifter stuff over here. So looks like we're ready to go guys. Ready, charged up. I am going to just fiddle with that derailleur really quick and make sure that we can shift all the way through the gear. Finally, let's get on this thing and ride. It sure does look pretty. Let's see how it rides. All right, let's get on this thing and get going. I'm just in um, assist one right now. Go down the gravel here, see how it is. Now, this is the first time I've ever ri ridden a three-wheeler, guys, a tricycle like this, especially an electric one. So keep in mind that um, feel like you want to lean, but the bike's going to lean just depending on the terrain. So brakes, now that I have them adjusted, remember you're gonna have to do your own adjustments on all this stuff, especially that rear assembly we put on. Let's just see how this thing does. So speed one, and I'm in the simplest gear right now. So it makes it really easy. Whoop, and it looks like, yeah, see that? Darn it. So just from the tweaking of the bike, it already came off its track. That's too bad. Let me see if I can fix that super quick. It came off with a gear. That's the easiest gear. So if that happens, I'm just gotta pull this chain back on. A few little cons. And if you're a good bike guy, you're gonna know how to set all that stuff up. So speed settings is working great. Let's see if we go all the way to seven on the clicker if it falls off that side. Nope. If you've never ridden a three-wheeler, you really have no ability to lean the whole bike. Remember that. You're at the mercy of these two wheels in the back. I mean, you can shift your weight so you don't flip over. But remember, don't go over like 15 kilometers per hour if you're trying to turn. Right now we're going seven about. See if I can stand up and pedal. Woo! Yeah, I feel that center of gravity. Just being a high center of gravity, very interesting. Feeling okay though, I'm gonna go up the road here. Let's try with just assist one and no pedaling. So that's no pedaling whatsoever. Takes a while to get up to speed. Let's see how fast we can get going. 15 maximum. Okay, let's try speed number two. Front brake's working good, rear brake's working good now that I have them adjusted. Dead stop. Seems like it's got a little bit more power from a dead stop. Let's see how fast we can get going on this one. Still only 15. So assist three, full throttle. Seems like it has the same initial from zero power startup. So that's not gonna give you any more power from a dead stop. See if it gets going faster if I go around this corner. Remember, you can pick up that wheel real easy if you turn too hard. Yeah, so it looks like our maximum, guys, is 15 anyway. You're not going to have any difference in just throttle, guys, with these three speeds. Only when you're pedaling. What I did notice though, is when you do pedal, it's like a very slow effect. Like the slower, it doesn't kick on is what I'm trying to say. Like some of those other bikes, the wide seat is comfortable, but if you're leaning way back on it, you're not gonna be pedaling very easy. Let's see what happens when we just hold the rear brakes fully solid. So rear brake, whoa, that was just 
braking the right wheel was like skidding. Front brake, the front brake is really good. That really stopped me quick. Noticing something that's a little bit weird is there's no stop on this. It will twist all the way around and rip your wires out. So be careful of that as well. Nice thing about these bikes is look, it's a little hard for me to pedal. I need a little, little help. I pull the throttle down. It starts to get me going and then I can pedal, okay? So if you guys weren't sure about how that'll work, that's what these electric bikes are really great for is not only assisting you in uh, pedaling, but also getting you started in weird situations. So this is it guys, going up a little gravel hill. My driveway is about 10 to 15% incline and it's getting up here just fine. Just got the driveway re-graveled, so the gravel's a little deep here. Let's see how it does. This is very deep gravel. <laughs> Fresh poured today on this part. Yeah, it feels good. <laughs> oh man, what a riot. So let's go ahead and get off this bad boy. Give it a little uh, pros and cons and um, just see what we think about it. If you're familiar with my videos or if you're not, my videos are just like real world kind of testing items. So you're not going to, this isn't a commercial. You're not going to see me riding in a city, just showing a great video of the bike. You're going to see how it really works, the limitations, what to be careful of, the problems. And that's why you watch my videos, right? So pros and cons. Baskets are awesome, except the rear basket. Remember we had this metal tabs that were really dangerous and hard to put on. They need to get some kind of better system to put the basket together. A con, no real brake light at all. Uh, I'd recommend if you do get this bike, getting one of those little ones you can strap on. I would recommend at least getting one of those little clip on red flashers just for safety reasons. If you're going to, especially riding at night. Another con right off the bat, and we can see this is look at this light. So since the light is on on the fender, which is now becoming loose, you see this? So I'm pulling it back up straight, but it's at the mercy of the shock. Pull down on the handlebars, you see that? The shocks enable the basket to hit the light and it, from that riding, it just went like that and it just kind of messed it up. A pro is the seat is very comfortable, but if you're far back on the seat, it's hard to pedal because the wideness of the seat starts binding up your legs. So you're gonna have to scoot forward a little bit. It's still very plush. Look at that. You get like two inches of padding, even on the front part. A great back brace uh, that makes it more even more comfortable if you're just cruising. So that is a pro. The shocks felt okay. I mean, being that you're not going off road, you're not gonna be really riding this on much bumpy surfaces. The few bumps that I hit, it felt fine. Usually these fat tires will usually soak up everything you need to. That's what's great about these is they're really plush and they soak up so much of the bumps. Worst part of this bike, guys, remember, was putting it together. So I don't really think there's any other way to do it if they're shipping these three-wheel bikes other than keeping the rear end unassembled. So my advice to you is if you don't mind going through, hopefully my video helped you put it together. If you don't mind going through all that, uh, go for a three-wheel bike. If you think you're gonna have too much trouble, just go to your local dealer or something and pick up a bike like this because that was probably the worst part of it was putting it together. Together. Pro on the display is a decent size, very bright and colorful. No problem seeing it there. Electric horn is always a plus. Throttle worked very well. All of the assist modes were fine. Remember, it might be a pro or con to you, but it is only a front wheel drive bike. The assist power is only up front. Pedal power is only on one tire in the rear. One wheel is just freewheeling. Pro on this bike, a uh, very good looking color. They got their colors and their all their wells look really quality. This is like an aluminum frame, I believe. So the grips are super pliable. The silicone they used is really grippy. I really like it, really comfortable. Everything else, you know, kind of rudimentary as far as far as the brakes, it's just cable brakes, nothing special there. Let's talk about the neck. Really have no idea why they chose to do a folding neck on a three wheel bike that has such a big gigantic box anyway. One last thing to touch on, and you can probably see it here, is check out the chain down there. You see how low that's hanging? So that is a super low derailleur. I mean, that's only a few inches off the ground over there. So if you're going over rocks and stuff and you hit that, 
uh, you may damage it and then you're having trouble shifting and all that stuff or even pedaling. So bottom line guys, uh, a decent bike. Um, if you're okay with how difficult this thing is to put together, it's not bad. I think this is one of the cheaper ones. If the price is right and you don't mind putting it together, you may want to pick it up. And don't forget, I have everything I review and what I use to film and stuff down there, down below in the description. Go ahead and check under the video and uh, you'll find all the links there and more links to stuff that I kind of vouch for and use in my everyday reviews and life in general. But that's going to be it for the Moon Cool TK1 is this model. A uh, three-wheel electric trike bike with great cargo space. That's definitely one of the positives is lots of cargo space. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. It was kind of fun. Uh, my first time reviewing one of these trikes. I hope I'm going to be doing a few more probably coming up in the future. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.